Hello everybody. So today I want to briefly cover Duolingo. Duolingo is a stock I had covered uh, in Q3 of 2022 and the stock has uh, almost doubled since I first covered it. Um, and I think it's still an interesting company and I think it still could have a very long growth runway because the, the numbers are big but they could get much bigger. So what is Duolingo? Duolingo, uh, their mission is to develop the best education in the world and make it universally available. They are known for their app. They have an app that gamifies learning. It's a, it's a rather addictive app, I would say, but it's also a, a, a somewhat effective app uh, if you believe a lot of the users. They have, they have tremendous amount of users, actually. Daily active users, 20 million. So you, you can really gauge the scale of 20 million people logging in every day into that app and seeing the ads, right? They make quite a bit of money uh, on their ads. Um, monthly active users, 7 72 million, same. A lot of that is all about the ads. And they just started launching a, subscri a subscription. So you can subscribe and you can have a paying subscription. And that's growing really fast at 63% year over year at 4.8 million subscribers. And so this company, in my view, uh, is doing very well. It's a very asset light type of business. And you can grow that exponentially, right? It's just, just an app that you can scale uh, to tremendous proportions. And you can scale it all over the world because learning a new language is, uh, I think, a pretty universal desire, at least if you don't, don't live in the network effect of English and you don't learn, you don't know English um, abroad, right? It's going to be very important for someone to learn English. And so I think this company has a, has a, has a very strong avenue uh, for growth company, of course, is still mostly languages and language lessons. Uh, their app is number one in education around the world. Uh, it's actually very, very highly ranked out of all of the apps uh, that you can get on your phone. They offer all of these languages, knowing that they add more languages uh, almost every year. And they're expanding to overfield, which is very interesting. And I believe this is a promising one, math, uh, Duolingo math. It's a brain training for adults and math lessons for um, for children. And this is, this is of course, very promising because they, they're starting with uh, the two uh, essential foundation of any elementary education, which is language and mathematics, right? These are still the basics of education around the world. And they're going really strong on this. They also launched with... with smaller success, but they've also launched a, a literacy app called ABC, and, and, and that app is still a, a minimal contribution to the business. But if you look at their apps, yes, it's a top grossing app. It's actually uh, right about the same as Audible. Um, you know, it's actually only two ranks below Spotify as far as the top grossing apps in the world go on App Brain, and this is both over, across, across iPhone and Android. So so the app is doing very well. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a top 20 app app and they have a lot of things that, that are going well for them that proves actually, not proves, but suggests the quality of their education. Um, and this to me is important. It's their Duolingo English test. And actually, their English test, their Duolingo English test is accepted at 3,800 higher education programs. And it's only 49 bucks versus $300 for the TOEFL. And this is obviously very important um, if, you, if, if, you live, uh, if you live in a country where 300 bucks is a lot of money, you're going to be very tempted uh, to, to get the Duolingo English test to try to go to school. And so I, I, I think they really have a continuity with their mission of, of education and democratizing education, knowing that uh, universities around the world, there's still a bunch of them, and their target market for this, for the Duolingo English test, would be about 11,000 universities that could accept that test. So still tremendous amount of growth here going on for that company. But moving on to the financial highlights, the company keeps growing, and even though the stock price, um, you know, has known quite a bit of a bump back in Q3 and Q4 of 2022, uh, the growth itself has not abated. It's growing uh, faster and faster, and actually daily active users are 62% are up year over year, monthly active users 47% up year over year. Of course, this will translate at some point into a paid subscription, or at least that's their hope, and so they are seeing a 63% increase in paid subscribers. Don't forget they make a lot of money on advertising as well and advertising has been down. There will be a pick back up of advertising and I think this company should benefit could benefit from that. Uh, user engagement is still at an all-time high. Very important to have engaged users if you want to play ads, if you want to get your users to upgrade to the paid service. 
EBITDA. As you know, on, the, on, on, on this channel, um, I, I do not look too much uh, at, at earnings and, and EBITDA. All I care is that the, the company is, is, is roughly breaking even. And it's the case for Duolingo. They're roughly breaking even. To me, this is a growth company. This is a company that's going to keep reinvesting and reinvesting. And by the time this company starts giving capital back to shareholders, I will likely have exited the stock. That's why I want to value a company like Duolingo only based on its growth potential, not based on its earnings potential. That is the way of investing that I do on this channel. But based on this performance and based on all this great stuff, uh, they are actually still uh, reaching their guidance and we'll, we'll see guidance in the su in, in a second guidance is well above the 30 percent mark that i look for in a stock revenue growth guidance is what i look for in all of my stocks on my channel because most of my stocks on the channel don't have earnings or the earnings are kind of meaningless um so that's why I care about revenue growth. And if you look at revenue growth, which is a proxy for adoption, by the way, uh, right? Revenue growth and revenue, if you, if you look at an, at an S-curve and an, at an exponential adoption S-curve, you'll see that revenue growth typically closely tracks that S-curve. It's, it's, a, it's a clear sign. Revenue, a revenue is a sell, right? You've made a sell. Your sales don't lie. If there are a clear sign that there is a, a high take on your product and that it's compelling to a lot of people. If you look at the past uh, eight quarters, right, the past two years, and this is this is Q1, but you can you can backtrack. This is Q422, Q322, etc. If you look back at the past eight quarters, they've consistently grown well above 40%. We've actually multiple quarters at 50% year over year growth, 40%, 47%, 48, 42, 43. They've, they've grown at 40% quarter over quarter for eight quarters. This is rare to find. This is pretty, pretty, pretty rare to find. And of course, this company, in my view, has sent back this guidance like most companies. And that's why the stock is way up compared to the first time I covered it. Um, we are still guiding for, for, for a range of 35 to 38 percent they actually upped that guidance in q1 and my guess is that they will up it again and up it again and we're gonna find something in the 40 percent uh, growth rate they're well on track to exceed their 2023 guidance also not worthy to say that the language learning market is itself uh, growing there's a, there's a global desire to learn languages and a global possibility now with phones and with apps right you have a lot of people who are getting getting phones i mean pho phones are are, are um, you know, all, almost everywhere, but you, but you still have probably a billion people who are in the process of getting phones that are app capable. And of course, once you get a phone, you get free education. And that's why when you look at, say, estimates of the global uh, or online learning uh, market, you see it's estimated to grow itself, the market itself estimated to grow at 20% a year until 2024. And of course, uh, there's some competition for, for Duolingo. Babel, Babel is a big one that comes to mind, but you also have traditional education, traditional learning. But uh, the pie seems to be fairly, fairly big and big enough to support multiple players. Although I do believe uh, in the space of, of learning, Duolingo is a very compelling play in, in my view. Um, the market for lang language learning is huge itself, but uh, there's optionality, as we'll see in a second, uh, plenty of optionality for, for Duolingo. Um, and they're also uh, really big on AI. And that may, that may explain a little bit of that run-up in the stock recently, is that they, they are um, implementing, merging a chat GPT-4 with their own AI systems uh, in order to have a tutor. You, you can create a tutor with a app within the app that's going to be powered by chat gpt4 so if, again these, these large language models um, and these transformer systems are uh, going to be very very powerful for duolingo and, and really allow them i believe to offer an app that will be akin to having a tutor in your in your um, in your pocket or a personal tutor to learn a foreign language which is very helpful if you are doing that moving on to my evaluation and finishing with my evaluation so this is the usual uh, spreadsheet that I use in my Friday, Friday videos where I analyze my growth stocks. And you can see that the valuation of Duolingo is actually just a tad undervalued compared to the average stock that I follow on this channel. The average stock that I follow on this channel uh, has about a, a 0 0.6 and they're at a 0 0.47. So definitely not a highly undervalued stock, definitely not the cheapest stock, but a valuation a little below, below average. And the question that I ask here is how much am I paying for that growth? And, and, and the growth is, is, is a 
is fairly inexpensive and keeping in mind that they're expecting to grow 40 percent that's my estimate because i think they will beat that guidance gross margin is excellent at 73 percent this is a company that is optimized for gross margin and, and actually has gone through some cost cutting efforts on on their on their um uh, cost of goods sold and their investment in the product they keep cutting costs uh, i wouldn't be surprised if we got a company that would get into the 80 percent gross margin here with duolingo um and to me, this is how I will conclude, and that's why I want to talk about optionality a little bit here. Um, the question, the question one, when once one wants to invest in Duolingo, is Duolingo today as, as, as 20 million daily active users? 20 million daily active users. Uh, we know uh, that the planet has something like eight. 8.3, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's 8.3 billion people. Uh, within a few years, we'll be closing in on 9 billion people uh, out there. Uh, and, you know, they have 20 million active data users, uh, 5 million paying users. And so the question is, can these figures 10x? I think that's an important question to ask to realize whether we can keep growing that strong, that fast for the next 10 years. And to me, having a world where you say have... 48 million um, active paying users for language, that, 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 that idea does not seem that far-fetched to me. Um, and same for non-paying users. Could you have 200 million non-paying users on an app like Duolingo, on a free app like Duolingo? Again, that doesn't seem that far-fetched to me, knowing that English is, is not the most spoken language in the world. Right, and you have India. India now the most populous country in the world, 1.5 million. Well, they, they do speak English, but they may want to uh, learn other languages. Uh, China, I do not know if Duolingo has access to China, but there's a lot of very big countries that could use Duolingo. Um, and uh, again, could other apps see the same growth? Right, they have an a literacy app. They have a math app. They are going full circle around elementary education, right? Language, mathematics. What could we have next? Could we have a Duolingo history app that specializes in the history of different countries? Could we have a Duolingo, um, you know, uh, geography app, for example, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's many, many uh, variants that you could add to that app. And that's an easy conversion. Because if someone is already, quote unquote, addicted or in love with their Duolingos, it's very easy for them to see themselves downloading another app like Duolingo Math to have fun doing math or learning about history or, or whatever um, like that. So this is a company that can invest in multiple apps, multiple versions of that app, and not only grow across their main app, which is the language app, but also grow across apps, right? Across different apps that they would create and, and um, you could see some exponentiality in that growth, or at least a continuation of growth in the 40%-ish uh, year over year. And, and again, the stock to me, if you look at it, hasn't really changed much from the IPO price. I mean, we've had this big depression in the stock market in 2022, but the stock has still recovered, and it is a stock that is still trading nearly its IPO price, even though uh, the, the, the revenue itself is much, much, much higher. So this is all I have to say about Duolingo. Um, this is not investment advice, right? This is just entertainment. I hope you liked this video. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already, and you can follow me on Twitter. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.